This video accompanies Learning IoT with Python and Raspberry Pi. In this video, you will learn how to write if, elif, else statements. The final script in this video lecture illustrates how to control a piezo buzzer using an if statement that has more than one clause. Hence, you will also need a half breadboard, a piezo buzzer, and two female to male jumper wires. If statements can contain more than one clause. For example, suppose you wish for a block of code to be executed only if a certain condition is true and another block of code to be executed only if that condition is false. Such an if statement is composed of an if clause and an else clause. We'll refer to such if statements as if else statements. Notice that the suites are indented four spaces with respect to their clause headers. It is a syntactic requirement of the Python programming language that a clause header must be followed by a suite, and the lines of the suite are indented four spaces with respect to the clause header. The first line that is reached that is not indented four spaces with respect to the clause header signals the end of the clause. This flowchart represents an if-else statement. If the condition tested is true, then the if suite is executed and the else clause is skipped. If the condition tested is false, then the if suite is skipped and the else clause is executed. We'll write a script that tests if a variable a has a value true or false. We'll print out a is true only if a is true, and print out a is false only if a is false. And we'll print out after if else statement, regardless of whether or not a is true. We'll assign true to the variable a before the if else statement that tests if a is true. We'll save the script. And run it. A is true and after if else statement are printed out. Next we'll assign false to A and run the script again. This time, a is false and after if else statement are printed out. Any specification that could be implemented using an if else statement could be implemented using two single clause if statements. We'll write a script that determines if the user entered a number greater than 100. If so, then greater than 100 should be printed out. Otherwise, less than or equal to 100 should be printed out. We'll implement this first using two single clause if statements. We'll use an input function call to prompt the user to enter a number. The first if statement tests if guess is greater than 100. And the second if statement tests if guess is less than or equal to 100. We'll save the code. And we'll run it. First we'll enter 120. We'll run the code again and enter 100. And we'll run the code a third time entering 30. Next, we'll implement this using an if-else statement. We'll begin with the same assignment statement. This time, however, we'll use a single if-else statement in which guess greater than 100 is tested. We'll save the script. And run it, and we'll enter the same set of numbers, beginning with 120, 100, 30, and 30. 
Both of these scripts correctly implement the specification. However, the if-else statement is more efficient because only one condition has to be tested. Suppose you wish for a block of code to be executed only if a certain condition is true, another block of code to be executed only if that condition is false, but another condition is true. Such an if statement is composed of an if clause and an l if clause. We'll refer to such if statements as if elif statements. As before, the suites are indented for spaces with respect to their clause headers. Suppose you wish for a block of code to be executed only if a certain condition is true, another block of code to be executed only if that condition is false, but another condition is true, and yet a third block of code to be executed if both conditions are false. Such an if statement is composed of an if clause, an elif clause, and an else clause. We'll refer to such if statements as if elif else statements. Again, note the indentation of the suites. This flowchart represents an if elif else statement. If the condition in the if clause is true, then the if suite is executed and both the elif and else clauses are skipped. If the condition in the if clause is false, then the if suite is skipped and the condition in the elif clause is tested. If the condition in the elif clause is true, then the elif suite is executed and the else clause is skipped. If the condition in the elif clause is false, then the else clause is executed. Multiple elif clauses are permitted and the conditions in the clauses are tested one by one until a condition that is tested is true. Then the associated suite is executed and the rest of the clauses are skipped. If none of the conditions are true, then the else clause is executed if there is one. We'll write a script that determines if the user entered a number in the range less than 100, less than 1000 but greater than or equal to 100, or out of range. In each case, an appropriate message should be displayed. We'll call the input function to prompt the user to enter a number, and then we'll convert the user's response to an int and assign it to the variable guess. The if clause tests if guess is less than 100, and the elif clause tests if guess is greater than or equal to 100 and less than 1000. The else clause will be executed if the user enters a number greater than or equal to 1000. We'll save the script. And run it. We'll first enter minus 300. And then 100. 250 and 1100. We'll remove 100 and the first comparison operator from the expression in the LF clause. If the LF clause is executed, it must be the case that guess is not less than 100. That is to say, guess is greater than or equal to 100. Hence, it is not necessary to test if guess is greater than or equal to 100 in the LF clause. We'll save the script and run it using the same set of numbers as before. We'll enter minus 300 first, and then 100, Two hundred fifty and eleven hundred. We'll further modify this code by swapping the order in which these two conditions are tested and alter what is printed out accordingly. This if elif else statement has different logic from the first two statements and does not correctly implement the specification. We'll save this code and run it. When we run this version of the code, the message less than 100 is not printed out 
even though it is certainly true that minus 300 is less than 100. When an if statement has multiple clauses, once a condition is found that is true, then the rest of the clauses are skipped, even though the conditions tested in those clauses may be true. By replacing the expression in the if clause with 100 less than or equal to guess, less than 1,000, this if elif else statement will then become logically equivalent to the first two versions. We'll save the code and run it again with minus 300, 100, 250, and 1100. We'll next use an if elif else statement to determine how a piezo buzzer should beep. We'll use the randint function to generate a random integer between 1 and 10. If the integer is less than 4, then the buzzer should beep 1 second once. If the integer is greater than or equal to 4 and less than 7, then the buzzer should beep 0.25 seconds four times. If the integer is greater than or equal to 7, then the buzzer should beep 0 0.10 seconds ten times. Before we enter the script, we'll hook up the buzzer circuit. You'll need a piezo buzzer, two female to male jumper wires, and a half breadboard. We'll use the GPIO 17 pin and a ground pin. We plug the piezo buzzer into sockets J1 and J8 such that the positive lead is plugged into J1. We'll plug the male end of the red jumper wire into socket F1 and the female end onto GPIO 17 and the male end of the black jumper wire into socket F8 and the female end onto one of the ground pins. We'll first import the randint function from the random module and the buzzer class from the GPIO 0 module. Because we've connected the piezo buzzer to the GPIO 17 pin, we have to create an instance of the buzzer class with 17 passed as the argument. Next, we'll call the randint function with arguments 1 and 10 and assign the integer to the variable guess. The if clause is used to check if guess is less than 4. If it is, then the buzzer will beep one second once. We'll pass the value of false for background so that the beeping will finish before the close method is called on the buzzer object. If guess is greater than or equal to four, then the elif clause is executed. If guess is less than seven, then the buzzer will beep 0.25 seconds four times. Finally, if guess is greater than or equal to 7, then the buzzer will beep 0 0.10 seconds 10 times. We'll call the close method on the buzzer object, save the code, We'll run the code. Look in the variables tab. Guess had the value 1, which is why the if suite was executed. Run the code again. This time the value of guess was 7. Run the code again. When you're finished testing the circuit, disconnect the jumper wires. Go to www.learningiot.net for links to where you can buy Learning IoT with Python and Raspberry Pi.